everyone today i am going to discuss with you about ludwig angina one of life threatening emergency that you may encounter in your practice before i start i would like to show you a typical case of ludwig angina this 39 year old female patient came to our hospital with complaint of swelling on the face and neck difficulty in swallowing but as such no difficulty in respiration patient was immediately admitted taken to operation theater iv antibiotic started bilateral submedular incision was given abscess was drained involved tooth was extracted hospital for next 5 days she was discharged on 6th day with complete relief from all symptoms antibiotics was continued for 3 more days patient was on regular follow up for next 15 days now let's start the topic ludwig angina patient pick on the day of discharge Ludwig angina another name marbus strangulatorius angina malignans William Friedrich von Ludwig in 1836 and Krem 1837 described about Ludwig angina Ludwig angina is rapidly progressive cellulitis of the soft tissue of the neck and floor of the mouth with progressive swelling and elevation and posterior displacement of the tongue it can lead to airway obstruction and even patient death bilateral involvement of submandibular sublingual and submental space basically browny hard swelling here one question that can come in your mind ki how one tooth can involved all the spaces in the neck like for example if only one tooth like second molar is involved and the infection has entered into the right side submandibular space from here infection can travel to submental space on the same side and along the deep lobe of submandibular gland infection can travel to same side sublingual space and from sublingual space it can cross the midline with the gap between the intrinsic muscle of the tongue it can travel to the opposite side lingual space and from sublingual space infection can travel to submandibular space and one more route as such i have already explained that infection can travel from submental space to submental space and from submental space it can involve the other side submandibular sublingual space this way a single tooth can involve the bilateral submandibular space sublingual space and submental space etiology of ludwig angina most common is odontogenic most commonly mandibular second and third molar heterogenic while giving local anesthesia particularly during inferior lower nerve block by using contaminated needle traumatic injury to the orofacial region osteomyelitis submandibular and sublingual sylodenitis secondary infection of the oral malignancies Miscellaneous causes include infection in the tonsils or pharynx, oral soft tissue laceration. Microbiology of Ludwig angina. Most common causative microorganisms are Streptococci, Staphylococci, Gram-negative microorganisms such as Coli and Pseudomonas, anaerobic bacteria, anaerobic Streptococci, and few spirochetes. now coming on to the clinical features of ludwig angina clinical features look toxic very ill and dehydrated 
marked pyrexia, anorexia, dysphasia, impaired speech, and hoarseness of voice. Firm, hard, brown swelling, board like, woody, hard, swelling, non pitting, minimally non fluctuant, severe tenderness, and with ill defined border. Trismus. Mouth remains open due to airway obstruction, cyanosis due to hypoxia, respiratory rate increased, breathing become being shallow, there may be dilation of the alanese, raising of the thoracic inlet by the scalene and sternocleidomastoid muscles. Fate of Ludwig angina, if you left untreated a case of Ludwig angina, if left untreated, it can be fed. 12 to 24 hours death arising from asphyxia treatment protocol for a case of ludwig angina first is early diagnosis maintenance of patent airway intense and prolonged antibiotic therapy extraction of offending tooth surgical drainage or decompression of the facial spaces Early diagnosis. The majority of patients report dental pain or a history of recent dental procedures and neck swelling. Less common complaints include neck pain, dysphonia, dysphasia and dysarthria. Less than one third of adults will present in respiratory distress and dyspnea, tachypnea or strider. Maintenance of patent airway. Airway management is the foundation of treatment for patient with Ludwig angina. Unfortunately, the decision to secure the airway continue to rely on clinical judgment and experience. There are no established guidelines for airway control in patient with Ludwig angina. Current recommendations are primarily based on the individual experience. Patient presenting respiratory distress or impending airway of require immediate intubation recommended technique include routine orotracheal intubation and fiber optic nasotracheal intubation blind nasotracheal intubation should not be attempted as there is chance for bleeding and abscess rupture and that can complicate the outcome in non intubated patients Airway equipment including tracheostomy and cricotheratomy instruments must be at bedside of the patient. And prolonged antibiotics therapy. Antibiotics should be initiated as soon as possible and should initially be broad spectrum. Later on you can go for culture and sensitivity test and with that you can change the antibiotics. Combinations of penicillin, clindamycin and metronidazole and are typically used. Some studies suggest the use of intravenous steroids. According to them, corticosteroids administration can potentially avoid the need for airway management or you can avoid tracheostomy. Surgical decompression by giving bilateral submandible incision, submental incision, draining all the abscess and placement of the Drainage and after drainage of the abscess, you can irrigate the site by using the solution of betadine mixed with normal line and hydrogen peroxide. Now, take home message from my side if any patient with infection in head neck area came to your clinic then I suggest to follow these principles determine the severity of infection state of the patient host defense decide on setting of care treat the infection surgically provide medical support choosing antibiotic therapy administration appropriately evaluation of the patient regular follow-up thank you Thank you for your...